Hey there, this is Joy Heisey on the campus of Huntington University. You're listening to Rooted, an in-depth conversation with interesting people and topics that matter to the Forrester family. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. You can find us by searching Forrester Radio Rooted. And you can also catch Rooted Thursday evenings at 7 on 105.5 WQHU. Today, I'm joined by Professor Adesi and Professor Ballinger. They are both animation professors here. Thank you for joining me. You're welcome. You bet. (laughs) Anytime. (laughs) Whatever you say. All the time. (laughs) All right. So first, I'm going to talk to you, Professor Adesi. Um, I believe, according to LinkedIn, um, you graduated here at HU in 2010. Uh, That is correct? correct. Yeah. Nice. And you started working here as an adjunct in 2013. Yes. So in total, you've been teaching here for eight years? I guess so. So you know your way around the campus. No, I I walked past this room that (laughs) we were supposed to stop into, so. Well, with that being said, my first question is, what do you remember most about being a student here at HU? Was it the atmosphere, a random student with a quirky character, or a unique professor? Hmm. Hmm. Definitely it was, I think, just hanging out in Becker Hall. Especially, I mean, a couple other animation majors were kind of had like a little light, late night club. And we'd stay at Becker to like, three or four in the morning, just working on random projects and playing with the toys, things like that, and then sleep in the next day, go to classes. <laughs> Those were the fun times. Usually nobody else stayed up that late, and it was just kind of a core group of uh, fun people, played music and <laughs> made I've, animation. I've stuff. definitely done that already here. What about the food bombs? Food bombs? Oh, oh yeah, food bombs. Oh, there's some crazy, crazy videos out there slow motion ones of people in wetsuits spiking <laughs> them on pavements to what was the, what was the song <laughs> oh yeah yeah a big epic yeah it's a big epic song yeah you time. guys were nuts yeah yeah we were nuts yeah can you define a food bomb to the audience Ooh. um it's uh a two liter bottle hmm. it's food and it's time so you put all those ingredients okay. together and then you throw it up in the air and it hits the ground and hmm. if you've given the right proportions of those ingredients then right. you get something spectacular mm-hmm. How long does it usually take a food bomb to it grow? It varies a lot. It can okay. be, we've had ones that only took a couple of days and ones that took like a semester. Nice. Yeah. Was there a, um, you said they had themes. Was there one you particularly liked the most? The, 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 the believe it or not, the fish, onions, and milk one <laughs> was amazing. That was probably the most. Volatile? Yeah, that one was. Phew, um, but the Happy Meal one was great because the, it exploded, and then right where it exploded, there was the little free toy was sitting yes. right in the middle. So that one was pretty good. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, moving on. Second question for you was, did you have a favorite class? And if so, what was it? Favorite class? Hmm. I think I'd have to go with Professor Shaw's class. Back then, it was called Acting for Animators. And I think it like taught here, was it just a semester or was it two? I think it was a full year. I think it was a full year. He was year. really good. He was really good. Um, it's kind of a version of a class I teach right now. And a lot of what I teach in there is kind of inspired from that class. And a lot of 3D posing and acting. And it's where I really started getting into that process and enjoying 3D animation and 2D animation kind of spilled into both. But yeah, I'd say that's kind of the one that has the biggest impact on me. And it's one I use the most frequently, I'd say, in my current teaching. 
Nice. Did Did you have a favorite project in that class? Favorite project? Oh yeah, I loved anything to do with the dialogue. We'd get dialogue pieces, and then we'd have to act them out in front of a camera, <laughs> doing lots of takes. And so, I think, yeah, some of my classmates they just go with one take, and I remember spending like forty five minutes or so doing all kinds of different versions to find exactly the one mm -hmm. I wanted. And oh, there was one, I think he just let us pick movie clips, like voice clips from movies. And for some reason I picked like an Optimus Prime one saying like Autobots roll out or something <laughs> like that. And I was trying to put some acting to that. And it was a good time. I don't know if I have that project somewhere. Be fun to dig up. I should definitely look into finding that. <laughs> or burn it and show no one ever again. <laughs> All right. My third question for you is how did you discover HU for undergrad compared to your job, finding it as your job? So let's see. Yeah, I'm from way over in eastern Ohio. We were looking at like Columbus, some schools down in there, and we're looking at some. Cleveland, we looked around at the Pittsburgh Art Institute too, and uh, we're trying to figure out something that fit. I knew I wanted to adventure a little ways away from home, and um, I think we were just searching online and came up like in the fourth page or so. <laughs> it was pretty buried in there. <laughs> I think that's the uh, the joke amongst the faculty is they say we're the the best kept secret in Indiana or something like that. <laughs> Cause nobody really knows about us, but once they do, wow, we blow their mind. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sort of thing. So it took a little bit of digging, but I did find, find it. I was like, let's, sure, let's put that on the list and visit. And we came over here and I fell in love with the trees. And you were like, yeah. Yeah, that's how I found it. And then, yeah, it really only took about one visit and I kind of fell in love. And that's a, that's a story I hear a lot, too, from other students that come and visit. Like, well, yep, this place feels like, like home. I want to come here. Then why did, like, why, um, why did can you explain why you then decided to stay here as your career? I'd been work. I was working a lot of jobs around. I was working with, I actually worked at the Fort Wayne Children's Zoo for a while. I did. I was doing animal illustrations for their zoo exhibit signs and painting stuff like that. And that was worked, pretty cool, actually. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, I worked with some other studios here and there and did lots of children's book covers and, and all kinds of stuff. And then, um, so it was mostly doing a lot of kind of short-term gigs, that, which I really liked. Once things start getting monotonous and you're doing the same thing again and again mm -hmm. and again, I lose That's interest. why a lot of people freelance. Yeah. Get all the variety. Right. I lose interest real fast. And yeah. I didn't I don't think I knew it at the time, but I mean ultimately that was kind of shaping me into being pretty good suited for a professor role. Because mm. you're constantly doing different classes, everyone's doing different projects all the time, figuring out how to use this software with this project and combine these teams together, all kinds of fun stuff like that. And um, yeah, I remember I took a Steve and Brian when they were teaching back in the day. I'd asked if I wanted to do a drawn animation class as an adjunct. And so I was like, I hadn't considered that. So I was like, oh, we'll try it out. I've kind of, I was thinking back to how I was in college. And I usually like to try and work ahead or things would click a little quick for me. And I, I did find enjoyment. Kind of helping out others in the classroom or whether that was in a teacher assistant role or just helping others figure out stuff and so little did i know there's a lot of groundwork being laid for kind of shaping up to doing that first adjunct role and then um, they had another class for me in the spring and then that launched into more and the rest is history and now you're yeah. still here yeah <laughs> <laughs> yep still do freelance stuff on the side and um Book covers and odds and ends projects when they pop up. Um, Theater set paintings. Oh yeah, that's fun. Those are awesome. Oh yeah, yeah. Usually about once a year I get to do 
theater set painting for a big digital one for a mm. uh, studio over in Chicago that puts on children's theater. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah, we did a, a Jungle Book one was probably my favorite I did. I love jungles. Yeah. yeah. Good times. Awesome. Another thing that's cool about being an animation professor is that, you know, instead of reading essays about the same topic over and over, everyone's projects are like so different. Yeah. Yeah. It's so. nice having the variety. And yeah. Yeah. You could give the same prompts every year, the same themes every but year. But you'll never get the same thing. Every student will interpret it a little bit differently. And yeah. Or a lot different. A lot differently. Yeah. So it's, it's in. It is interesting kind of recycling some stuff sometimes just to see the vastly different mm -hmm. results you get just because it's a different class. Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. Thank you for sharing everything. No um, well, I'm glad you're still here. Mm -hmm. And I hope you enjoy your freelancing jobs because that sounds really fun, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, but we're going to move over to Professor Ballinger. Yeah. I'm going to talk to you now. Okay. Um, I know that, according to LinkedIn, you've been here since 2005? Yeah. Nice. nice. Yep. So, in total, that's 16 years. Yes. Entering into my 17th. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. She kind of, like, started the animation program here, pretty much. Yes, with uh, another professor, Steve Leeper. Okay, so my first question for you is, how did you find this job, and what made you decide to take it? Uh, well, I was working at Big Idea, and then through some bad financial things, they ended up going bankrupt. And so while that was happening, I was getting my master's degree because I just kind of wanted to get one. And so they... Um, they're going bankrupt, and then Lance Clark here was, wanted to start an animation program, and so he called Phil Vischer at Big Idea and said, "Do you have anybody who you know used to work there that you think would be good?" And he referred both Steve Leeper and I. So we both came out and interviewed, and they were only going to hire one of us, but then they decided they would hire both of us. It's awesome. So yeah, so it's all Lance Clark's fault. Okay, I'll blame him. Yeah. Oh. Did Lance know Phil? Before? I don't or think so. You just cold called him? Yeah, that's Lance. <laughs> yep. He's, he's that's bold. bold. That's bold. He yeah. is bold. That's funny. Yep. <laughs> um, my second question for you is, what was Odessi like in class? Was, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> was he a troublemaker or was he like the class suck up? Mm. <laughs> mm. He was quiet but devious <laughs> yeah That's accurate yeah yeah once you got to know him you realized that he was very uh, he had a, a lot of sarcasm and a big sense of humor and um yeah <laughs> yeah yeah now he just it's all out there in the right. open. but back right. then he kept it under wraps or he tried to yeah but uh yeah. I remember, let's see, I remember being a little stubborn. Like, <laughs> I don't think I, yeah. I like taking direction a whole lot. I like to At first figure anyway, it out yeah. myself, mm -hmm. I think. So yeah. I think for a while I was resilient a little bit of like, I just want to play around myself first, then I'll ask <laughs> for help if I get stuck. I was one of those students, I think. Um, <laughs> I eventually embraced yeah. it a little more towards the end, I think. Good times. Yeah, once you got into something, though, you were really mm -hmm. going hard, hard working at it. Yeah. Did you forget about everything else going yep. on in life? Yep. Just focus on focus. that one thing. Was there a project that he did that was, like, super awesome and good that you remember? Uh, mm -hmm. Your superhero card and... Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Inspirational design was pretty great. Do you remember your superhero? Oh, yeah. Curly Fry. Curly Fry. That was probably my favorite thing. Yeah. <laughs> that was good times. Yep. Superhero cards. Yep. yep. That was... You remember Coles? Oh, Flop Sweat. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and somebody did Tinkle Toes. I can't remember who that <laughs> oh, was. Yeah. That was 
<laughs> Nacho bar. Yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Great Butter, superhero names. Butterbean. Butterbean. Colin. Yeah. They were all based on their nicknames. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Why was that curly fry? I think you brought them in once from the DC. Nice. Yeah, that's, that's all it took. Yep, that's that's, that's, that's your personality yeah. right there. Yeah, <laughs> and then flop sweat, Cole. I mean, yeah, he's obvious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hope he listens. Oh, we'll make this. sure. He yeah, hears we'll okay, yeah. good, good. Shout out to flop sweat. Yep, shout out to out flop there. sweat. <laughs> flop sweat for life. The president. <laughs> flop that's sweat gang. Well, then my last question for you then is. Do you prefer being a professor over working in the field itself, or do you enjoy both equally, or would you rather just, like, go back in the field someday? Um, I think it's a trap. Yeah. It's a trap. Is that a trap? Should I word it differently? No, that's fine. <laughs> uh, I would say at different points in my life, I, I like one over the other. And at this point, uh, I like, teaching side more than being at a company like at an animation studio or something hmm. um, but I like the being able to choose specific freelance work that I really want to do hmm. but don't have to do hmm. so the combination of teaching and doing freelance work that I want to do is mm -hmm. gotcha that's where I'm at right now gotcha all right well I do have some questions for both of you guys to answer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I know. It's like a quiz. Um, Is for this both... a competition? It can be if you okay. want it to be. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, well, first thing is, what is your favorite part about being a professor here? Favorite part? Or like aspect mm -hmm. or... I student. really enjoy access to all the free education licensing from the softwares mm. um, that I would normally probably have to pay thousands of dollars a year, but it kind of just comes with the territory a little bit. I thought you were going to say the discount at the DC. Oh, I forgot about the discount. That's pretty far up there. I think there's a 5% discount at the bookstore too. Oh, uh, nice. Huntington swag. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I guess that's, that's a selfish answer with the the software, I'd say it's favorite part is the, the loving smiles of children when they mm. find their, their <laughs> dreams and what they want to do for the rest of their lives. That's what, that's what I get up every morning for. Yeah. And the subservience and the adoring looks. I right. know you like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone calls me overlord or mm -hmm. minister or professor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Feels good. Yeah. I like the power. <laughs> In all seriousness, though, it is it is nice seeing them get their dream jobs or find where they fit in the world and have them excitedly message us back a couple years later or maybe sometimes right after college. Guess what I just got? Or, yeah. what? or we can help them find what that looks like, too. And I mean, that's that's super rewarding, I would say. Yeah. And in class, seeing them... Uh figure out kind of what they're really good at and what they really like to do, which they, a lot of them don't know that coming in or mm -hmm. they think mm -hmm. they know it, but they really, or they're on a path where they're struggling and not being successful and then they figure out, mm -hmm. you know, oh, the way I work, I'm really geared towards this and I really like it. So that would be, that would be a good one. Yeah. That is satisfying after, yeah, maybe there's, They've tried so many different things and haven't quite clicked with something. Finally, it's like a light bulb goes off. Yeah, those are cool moments. Um, because you used to be professor student, um, what is it like now being co-workers? What's uh, being co-workers like? Ooh. I guess if you want a serious answer though, um, I feel like it was very gradual. It was almost hard to notice a big shift. Like, I think if I was hired on as, like, a full-time right away, there might have been a little bit more weird, but it kind of started off 
adjunct for a class here or there so they kind of got used to me around and I did what I was what I was told and taught the classes that way and and I slowly got braver and braver no I want to teach it this way I was mostly arguing with Steve though yeah (laughs) (laughs) good times but yeah I would say it was kind of a gradual transition yeah I would say the biggest the biggest it was definitely gradual although I would say the biggest kind of change was like the first time we co-taught oh yeah classes yeah so we were working and actually it was great i mean it worked out Mm -hmm. really good i think we were a good team on those yeah Yeah, but it was a lot of fun yeah but i will admit that the first time we did that i got a little too much fun out of interrupting you when you were trying to tell things i remember that yeah yeah. i remember that (laughs) I I would treat the it was like a big public speaking event, so I was like, all right, I've got things I I know I need to hit bullet points. <laughs> Brian would find that entertaining to yeah, throw it off the rails. If I think on my feet a little, but no, the bullet points. <laughs> the bullet points. Dear God, I was trying to toughen you up a little. That's all. Yeah, right. Yeah, I look back. I mean, all the students were behaving so well. Right. That's no fun. Right. I mean, that, you're not going to learn anything. No. I mean, all the studies show you have to, if you're having fun, you learn more. It right. sinks in. Yeah. Um, my last uh, HU-related question is, um, what would your advice be to the animation students on campus now, since you, Professor Odessi, have been in their shoes, and you, Professor Ballinger, have worked here and worked where many people hope to be someday, worked in the field. Hmm. My advice would be to be very stubborn. Don't give up, Um, keep at it. Um, The students who have succeeded after they've left are the ones who who, uh, just keep making stuff. You know, even if you don't find what you want to do right away, don't stop creating. Hmm. Otherwise, not good stuff tends to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of peters out. Or yeah. You're just so unpracticed after a while. And, yeah. And don't give up from immediate rejection. That's a big one. Yep. Uh, I would say, <sighs> advice wise, I like the, the saying, like, be open to the process and this is what I was taught a lot in various art courses over my life that you're going to have a plan or what you think you want the project to look like or the drawing or the animation but ultimately there's some really cool things that happen along the way that you learn to just embrace oh I hadn't during my planning, I hadn't thought about that and learning to be open to those little avenues as they pop up, I think will really make for some interesting things. And then if you bring that kind of outlook into your art journey in general, that's some advice I would give to students is, yeah, you might come in with an idea of what you want to get out of this, but be open to the process try a whole bunch of different things and I think that's what we like to try and think we're doing is just exposing you guys to or the students to just all kinds of different places that can use their art and their skills and their animation and maybe more so than just you know I just want to do Disney things or I just want to do really high-end stuff or something like that and um, those are great, but there's also a ton of other things out there you can do with it. And I think that's the advice I'd give is just be a little open to see what doors the good Lord's opening. Well, that helps me lead into my final question, which is, um, how can we pray for both of you? Unceasingly. What did you say? Unceasingly. Okay. With gusto. Yeah. Gusto. Yeah. Yeah. Mucho gusto. With 
with colorful language. <laughs> Hot pink language. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, thank you both for joining me for this episode of Rooted. And thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. And remember, you can listen to Forrester Radio over the air in Huntington or on 105.5 WQHU or by visiting our website, forresterdigital.net. <laughs>